Hi, my name is Devo Ghosh, and today I'll be presenting the NeurIPS paper titled Why Generalization in RL is Difficult, Epistemic Palm BPs, and Implicit Partial Observability. This is joint work with collaborators at UC Berkeley and at Princeton University. Now, a lot of works in the last few years have empirically investigated how well RL algorithms generalize. And to summarize them in a nutshell, they don't. This is a little bit surprising, given that we know how generalization works in supervised learning, and that with deep networks, we tend to do it pretty well. And it begs the question, is generalization in RL a fundamentally more difficult problem, or have we just not figured out the empirical details yet? In this talk, I'm gonna to try to convince you that generalization actually is a fundamentally more difficult problem. And the cause is a little subtle. It's that when we want to learn RL policies from a limited training set, it implicitly introduces an issue of partial observability. And this completely flips the problem on its head. It changes the types of objectives we need to solve, it changes the algorithms we can use, and it changes the types of policies that can do well. And instead of being able to use our tried and tested RL algorithms, which are based on MVP objectives and the Markovian policies they learn, we need to incorporate aspects of partially observable models, using different algorithms, learning information gathering behaviors, even in environments that a priori are actually fully observable. But before we leap into why this happens, let's get grounded on what we mean by generalization. Now, the typical RL loop involves an agent that interacts with an environment continually to maximize reward. And, you know, oftentimes in the real world, the environment has many contexts or different situations. For example, different levels in a video game, different mazes for a maze solving robot, different kitchens for a household uh, robot. And um, for this talk, we're going to assume that all contextual information is fully provided to the agent. That is, it's a fully observable problem. For example, in the maze task, it's not that the agent only sees a subset of the area around it, it gets to see the whole maze. Now, in the generalization problem, we say that instead of being able to freely able to access the environment, we only get to access some number of training contexts that have been sampled a priori from the environment. And one might think that we should be able to use the same RL algorithms just on the training context to maximize reward there. But, and this is one of the main messages of this talk, and we're going to see this again, this kind of strategy is going to fail. In order to understand why, let's go through a little example that I'm going to call the guessing game. The objective of the guessing game is to guess the label of an image as quickly as possible. The, the agent receives an image's observation and must predict a label. If this label is correct, then the episode ends. If the label is incorrect, then it gets some penalty and the episode continues. And so on the bottom here, you see what trajectories in this environment might look like. Here, the agent makes incorrect guesses twice for the same image in the first episode and gets it right on the third. Notice that it interacts with the same image throughout multiple time steps, meaning it's not a multi-armed bandit, it's not a supervised learning problem, it is an RL problem that is sequentially dependent on time. And uh, so the strategy, naturally, is for an agent to learn to guess the label as quickly as possible. So what's actually going to be learned by RL? when we train, let's say, an RL policy on a training set and evaluate it on a test set. It turns out that the algorithm doesn't do that well. And we can see why if we look at what the policy learns. The policy learns to deterministically output the same action for any image over and over again, deterministically with 100% chance. And which what that means is when the agent guesses the label correctly, as it does here in episodes two and three, it gets maximal return. But when it guesses it incorrectly, it makes the same mistake over and over again in the episode, achieving very high negative return. And in some sense, this is to be expected because when we run an RL algorithm, we optimize an MDP objective and MDP objectives lead to deterministic Markov policies. That's what's optimal. But we can see in this problem that this is actually very suboptimal. In fact, anything that we do, and if we want to generalize well, we should change our strategy once we see that our original action was incorrect. And this might seem a little surprising because, you know, at the beginning I said that, hey, this is an MDP. 
why is adaptive or random guessing strategies here in the green and orange, why are these outperforming my RL algorithm? And to do that, to understand why, let's go back and let's imagine what would have happened instead of training on a set of training images, what if we trained on all possible images? In this case, if our policy was expressive enough, then we would learn the correct mapping from images to labels, and our trajectories would look something like this. We would always guess the label correctly on the first try. Our policy would be deterministic Markov, and this is actually the best possible thing to do because it guesses as quickly as possible, and it guesses it always correctly. So when we have an infinite set of training contexts, this kind of MDP optimal strategy, which learns a deterministic Markov policy, actually leads to the best possible test time performance. But when we have a limited set of training contexts, when our agent might guess the label incorrectly, or there's uncertainty about what the correct label is, then this kind of MDP optimal strategy fails catastrophically in this case. And it's dominated by adaptive and even simple stochastic strategies. What's going on? When we receive the training context from the agent, the agent wants to train in some kind of environment. But the issue is that given this limited set of training contexts, the agent can't fully reconstruct what the true environment looked like because there's actually many environments that are consistent with this limited training set of levels. And if the agent focuses on only one of these possible consistent environments, this can lead to potentially low test return. What if the agent picked the wrong consistent environment to be the true environment? Instead, a better strategy for an agent is to come up with a strategy that's going to work well across these different environments. We can formalize this in the Bayesian formulation, just changing notation a little bit. We're going to say that there's some prior on environments, P of M, that the training context that the agent receives corresponds to some kind of Bayesian evidence, and the agent uses this to learn a posterior distribution over environments P of M given D. And what the agent wants to do is it wants to come up with a strategy that works well across these different environments. This isn't anything new. This is true in Bayesian supervised learning as well. But what's going to be special is how exactly and what exactly it takes to do well across this posterior distribution over environments. Turns out that the strategies needed are much more complicated than in supervised learning or cost sensitive learning. And we can formalize this using the epistemic POM DP which captures the intuition that the agent knows that it's in one of these consistent environments, but doesn't know which one, yet it would like to do well and receive high return. What's going to happen is that each episode, a new environment from this posterior distribution is going to be sampled, and the agent asked to interact with it. Not notably, the agent doesn't know which environment it's being asked to interact with. It doesn't know if it's in the purple one, the red one, or the navy one. Once the episode ends, we're going to do it again, a second time. Sample a new environment and rinse and repeat the process over and over again. So the agent needs to come up with a strategy that's going to work well across all of these different environments. Why are we talking about the epistemic POM DP? Well, it turns out that there's a very tight link when the Bayesian interpretation is correct between performance and the epistemic POM DP and the return that we expect to get at test time. That is, when our policy does well in the epistemic POM DP, we expect it to get high return at test time. And when the policy does poorly in the epistemic POM DP, we expect that it should get low expected return. And taking this logic to the extreme, it means that the optimal policy for generalizing, the Bayes optimal policy for maximizing generalization performance, actually corresponds to acting optimally in this partially observed MDP. Let's make this concrete. And so we understand what these different posterior distribution looks like, what the epistemic POM DP looks like and back in the guessing game. Now, in the guessing game, what was the issue? Why were there multiple possible consistent environments? Well, it's that the agent is uncertain about mappings from labels to images. Given the limited test set, the, given the limited training set, the agent can come up with many different functions that label images that agree on the training set, but maybe have different labels on the test set which means that when we pass this image into all of these different environments, maybe in some of them they correspond to the label three, in some they correspond to the label six. And so the agent, when it sees this image, it's being placed in an environment, each episode in this epistemic POMDP, 
into one of these three worlds. In two of them, the correct label for this image is a three. In one of them, the correct label is a six. And so the agent needs to come up with a strategy that's gonna work well, no matter whether or not the label is a three or the label is a six. For example, maybe the agent stochastically chooses between three, is three and six, placing more weight on three than six. Or maybe the agent does process of elimination. This is actually the optimal policy. First guessing three, and if that's incorrect, then guessing six. Let's clarify and make sure we understand what exactly is being partially observed here. It's not the context. The context, which is the image, is fully observed. The agent receives this in its observation vector. This is provided to the agent, but what's not provided is how the dynamics are gonna behave for this particular context. That is, the agent doesn't know that for this image, is the world gonna behave like it was a three, or is the world gonna behave like it was a six? And the agent needs to reason about that partial observability. So going back, what does the POMDP tell us? Well, it tells us that the things that we want, if we want to generalize well, we're gonna need the hallmarks of partial observability. For example, that the optimal policies for generalization are in general gonna be adaptive, or in the non-recurrent case, stochastic. It also tells us that the way that we currently train RL algorithms, which is using standard MDP objectives, is a very bad idea because these objectives and these algorithms learn MDP optimal policies, which can fail catastrophically. And we go into this into more details with examples in our paper, but it turns out that this is not just like a specific issue with this objective, even adding things like stochastic regularization is insufficient to escape these issues. That is, in some ways, the epistemic POMDP objective is actually just not aligned with these types of objectives that people learn using MDPs. If our current RL algorithms aren't doing the right thing, what should we do instead? Well, there is an obvious pedantic answer, and that's to just explicitly construct the epistemic POMDP and use your favorite POMDP solver to maximize expected return in it. And while this is conceptually simple, it is difficult to implement because it's hard to get this posterior distribution, P of M given D. It might be hard to learn, come up with a good prior for my problem. It might be hard to learn MDP models for my problem. It might be even harder to learn posterior distributions over MDP models for my problem. In our paper, no understanding that these kinds of, this explicit construction might be intractable, we propose a simple first step towards more practically solving the epistemic POMDP. What we do is we approximate this posterior distribution via the statistical bootstrap. And our algorithm at a high level looks something like this. We take these training contexts that are provided from the environment and we bootstrap subsamples uh, from these training contexts to create overlapping subsets of contexts. And we train a policy in this induced approximate epistemic POMDP to learn a policy. There are a few details as to how exactly this policy is learned, which you can find in our paper that exploit the particular structure of this POMDP so we don't have to go through the hassle of using a generic POMDP solver. And it turns out that this algorithm that we have, LEAP, it does much better than PPO on these tough generalization problems in the ProcGen benchmark, particularly Maze and Heist here. And the idea is simple. It's that PPO learns policies that continually make the same mistakes over and over again. For example, maybe running into a wall or not collecting the key it needs to get the environment. If it keeps making that same mistake, it gets stuck. Whereas Leap learns policies that are stochastic enough to avoid these kinds of failure modes and more reliably solve the task. But Leap is only a first step. And there's a lot of exciting work to be done in coming up with better approximations for the epistemic POMDP and ways of better faithfully solving it. Now, if there's one thing you take away from this talk, it should be that generalization in RL actually is a difficult problem. And the reason it's difficult is because of this partial observability that creeps in. The original problem was not partially observable, fully observable, but in introducing this limited data set, in order to do well, we need to tackle this implicit partial observability. And this is codified by the epistemic POMDP which shows that if I want to do well, I should learn a policy that works well in across the different environments that are consistent with the training context I've seen so far. And 
towards coming up with better RL algorithms that generalize better, we need to start bridging this gap between the MDP objectives that RL algorithms currently optimize and their misalignment with the epistemic POMDP objective that actually determines its performance. If you're interested in learning more, please check out our paper, our blog post, or the code, or meet us at the poster session. Thank you.